Hello guys, welcome to this week's video. As you may have guessed from the title, this is not a proper Zodcast episode where we discuss the content of one Berserk chapter, but rather a laid back discussion. You know, the time has come, Arch Studios um, have released their first episode. And yeah, we thought, let's talk about that a little bit. And that's why we are here today. I gotta say, this video probably doesn't have that much of a structure. It's just us um, exchanging opinions on the new episode. And yeah, but we will try to maybe go through it more or less chronologically. But I think we will spend probably most of our time on gigantic side tensions. But yeah, we will see. <laughs> I look horny. We will see. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, we were pretty much looking forward to this episode like we already made our our interview with art studio and uh, ever since that we were like pretty hyped so to say mm. and um, we're expecting uh, this new episode and it finally came out a few weeks ago so now we can actually talk about it and not longer wait well now we have to wait for the second episode but um, I think before before we dive into a possible second episode we should talk about the first episode yeah and i just want to blur things out right at the start it's incredible that's about my opinion <laughs> so if you if you want to hear the details keep listening but if you just uh, want to know what my, if i like it i i like it very much <laughs> yeah and also if you haven't watched the video yet go check it out before listening to us talking about it <laughs> the link is in the description all credits go to Arch Studios. I think they did an amazing job and judging from the extremely positive feedback they got so far, um, I'm sure there will be some more amazing stuff in the future that we can already look forward to. Yeah, we. Um, I don't know if you, if, if, you, if you are like down for that, but maybe giving the episode uh, a rating oh. from 1 to 10 at the end or, or do you... Mm, don't want to do that. I don't know if that is too shallow. Maybe at the end. Let's try. To yeah, do at, it the at the end. end. Not, not now. After maybe we've maybe like a, a, as in fast seat or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. well, I switched to German. <laughs> 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 yeah, and here again, I don't think that necessarily has to be said. But, anyways, we are no experts. So if we are missing any vital points in your opinion, then just tell us in the comment. This is basically just us talking about what we liked, what we maybe yeah. did not like that much, but we of course hold no claim to, or we don't claim that our way of thinking about it is the way, you know, it, yeah, it's just course, us talking course. about it's, it, of it's course. It's the same with our podcast, like we, we just, we're just talking about it and if you have another opinion that's completely fine, but it's just us talking about yeah. it, so yeah. Feel free to to let us know, not not many people do, but I would also, uh, I would honestly be happy about seeing some other opinions um, in the comments so maybe we can have a little chat there alrighty um, yeah so starting chronologically maybe let's just start with where the video starts with Void's um, monologue <laughs> which is already the coolest um, thing in the whole episode the cool <laughs> I like this introduction <laughs> yeah pretty much it's it's like his, his voice really carries the whole beginning like you you just can't click away because of his voice yeah i think he's midland's best voice actor so <laughs> because of arch studios he's got a he's got a job um apart from you know uh um moderating those eclipses <laughs> yeah like and pairing pairing all that with uh with at first a picture of the eclipse and then a, actually adapting the famous panel uh which really comes after, uh, like chronologically after the whole uh, uh, Black Swordsman arc. Black Swordsman arc, uh, but putting it right now at the beginning for uh, a chapter of the Black Swordsman arc is, I think, a pretty cool like use of this panel and of the explanation. Like it's it's a very cool beginning and just switching a bit around the order because, like, I think this beginning. Um, which is uh, a beginning of the uh, Golden Age arc. I think it's you, you can you can pretty much use it use it for every beginning for every episode. Like similarly to 
how the 97 adaptation did it with uh, with the same monologue in each every in each and every episode at the beginning you know yeah true we we, we talked about this very um, scene or panel not long ago where Guts is holding his um, sword in a sense sticking it to towards the sky it's from chapter one of the golden age arc so as we said not black swordsman arc but yeah it, it fits perfectly like uh yeah. coming i i think first of all it's epic but it also sets the feeling for berserk right at the beginning it lets you know how yeah. desperate melancholic and fucked up berserk is like it, it puts into words what berserk is really about it's about mankind's endless struggle with nothing more than a faint hope for something better <laughs> like awaiting yeah, at the end of this um, of this life but yeah and also the the background music with this with this um, female chorus uh, really adds to the whole feeling and the whole atmosphere um i think that's uh that's that's pretty cool like it it really sets up the stage for a very atmospheric episode and and really gives us already the mood and Uh, on what the episode will tell us so it's um it's already like setting the stage for what is uh to come after that hmm. yeah and yeah kudos to to whoever thought about this i think that this is amazing maybe we can go through the credits at the end so we we see again who is actually working on or who worked on what you know so then we can give uh precise shout outs <laughs> yeah Yeah, but uh, awesome, awesome starting. It's, it's it's kind of emphasizing what the what those episodes already show, but it's uh, making it very explicit, telling again, okay, this is this is what a berserk is about. Yeah, yeah, uh, I have to agree there, and I think like um, it's like immediately after that we already get the opening, mm -hmm. and um, I think this is the first thing that we are disagreeing on but maybe maybe let's go through it first before we talk about it uh yeah um yeah let's have a little fight i am <laughs> i'm very curious to find out where our differences are i um for me personally i i i adore the intro music like i really love it um it it kind of hits that little spot of on the one hand reminding us of the original But on the other hand, it still is its completely own thing, as um, Dio da Vinci was telling us, you know, what their, what, that this was their aim uh, with this uh, intro song. And no, fight me about this, but I would say it even in some way did a better job than the original. And maybe I can try to explain why. For me, the, f the first part of the original hits a little bit harder for me compared to the um, which is, of course, it's a hard comparison because, you know, there was a big studio behind it. But still, I, I'm not that much uh, into that rather, you know, uh, staccato sounding part at the beginning where it's na, 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 you know, but that's just uh, a matter of taste, I guess. But the second part yeah. out outruns the original for me by light years. I know it, it kind of has this lighthearted feeling as the original. Like uh, some people were criticizing that, that the original completely doesn't fit the overall tone of Berserk, and I get that. But the lyrics of um, from the pilot are, they really are fitting. Like um, that is a, uh, a thing that for me personally, the original um, couldn't achieve. If you look at, I mean, you can turn on the, um, the how do you say, the subtitles, the, the lyrics are genius like those uh, can they hear our prayers and also i think they are he's talking about griffith because the lyrics go like this um from the heights you now sit upon a corpse throne dying plea a man soon to his destiny i mean of course this could also fit for guards and i thought i knew you and now i don't know what's true somehow i will make it through This is just perfect, you know, like uh, the original, compare this to put your grasses on, nothing will be wrong. Like, what do you mean, guy? Everything will be wrong, you know? <laughs> yeah. So the, the lyrics didn't fit at all in the original, but this one for me mirrors um, the actual manga content-wise, but still has this poppy, 
uplifting, lighthearted um, sound to it. And yeah, I, I saw I saw this one YouTube comment um, beneath. Uh, how is it called the original intro? Um, Tell me why. And it said nothing will be wrong. Surely describes this anime. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that kind of reiterates what I already said. I, I completely love the intro. I, I like the melody that kicks in when we see little guts walking there and what mercy is there in all this despair. Can they hear our prayers? It's it's awesome. What do you think about it? You just said a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You could have stopped um, me there. <laughs> no, it's, um... I, I, I don't have an issue with uh, the lyrics, to be honest. I, I, I totally agree on that they are more fitting. Like, it couldn't be more fitting for uh, the whole message of Berserk to struggle. And even though things completely go down shit and completely go wrong, you still can go forward. Um, so uh, I don't have an issue with uh, the lyrics. I, in generally, I don't have an issue. Um, and I also very, very much liked um, the the footage and the pictures. Yeah, like yeah. this one shot of uh, of the eclipse, and then Griffith opening his eyes from that, like merging yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. with the with the eclipse. I really um, I really appreciated the art at the beginning, and also the shot where where we see uh, guts walking forward and then transforming into this really 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 cool artwork where he um like where he's completely burning and mm. showing his rage and his also also his power i think and i yeah like these these panels are so cool yeah. where we see for his, his one eye for instance burning or where he's walking completely. through darkness yeah. and it seems like he is burning himself um or his like these these shots are partly really minimalistic but i love that like it, it really emphasizes the whole art style which is like minimalistic of itself mm. uh like the whole 97 uh, art style that there are or like which was an inspiration for that or an orientation mm. i think i think you it couldn't be more fitting what they what they used as footage for for the intro so wh where's the um, butt where's the butt <laughs> um no i don't want to want you to rush uh, sorry uh, take your time <laughs> um no no it's uh, it's okay i was uh, i was close to finishing it or yeah, wrapping it up can, so can far it sounds perfect say in english where the hook is can you also say that uh, like the, uh, uh, the, the whole riff, thing has a hook <laughs> I, I, um yeah yeah who cares the, the only only but which is really really just a personal issue it's not it's not like uh, criticizing the whole um audio department or, or music <laughs> department of art studio okay. <laughs> really not it's just i don't like the whole melody but that is really that is that is really just a personal opinion like okay. i'm when it comes to intros um I I I'm more like a fan of of stuff like specials for the second season of Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm. Uh that's one of my favorite opening songs ever and it's also a really really dark season. Um not not as dark as Berserk I would I would say but uh, still still really fitting for the whole stuff. Um I don't know what what I what would want to hear for a Berserk introduction is really hard to say but um, in my opinion, the whole music is a bit too, I don't know, n not lighthearted, but, but maybe too, um, too pepped up. Pepped up. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like too, too, um, I don't know, too happy is the wrong word, but it goes in that direction. But was um, the, I, the original I, I would, as I, well? Like, uh, I think so, but okay. uh, yeah, and, and I don't, I don't say that it's better or worse than the original. I would also say maybe it's uh, even better, especially from the lyrics. But um, the whole melody, in my opinion, is not is not my is not the thing I would say that is fitting perfectly to Berserk. Mm. But uh, I think you and I we also talked about on one of our podcasts. I don't know which episode mm. uh, it was, but we were talking about uh, how different people have different visions for different adaptations, and uh, that not only goes for uh, the art style. Um, but oh, but of course, also for the music, and I completely uh, can live with that. That like Dio da Vinci and all the others that worked on the music were like, uh, all right. In our opinion, this is the this is this is perfect fitting, and I can totally live with that. 
I mean, after all, it's their work, it's their masterpiece. So they they have to decide what's best for mm. for the whole uh, adaptation or and what is not. So my my only issue is the melody of the song, but not the lyrics yeah. and not the background. Yeah, maybe you also should have in mind, of course. Um, yeah, different people, different uh, tastes, different opinions, and that, that's totally fine. But they, as Dio Da Vinci said in our interview, they were um, aiming to to um, create something that resembles, of course, this old uh, original intro music. So mm. it kind of bears that same quote unquote issue, but deliberately so. You know, uh, they yeah, probably totally. knew. Okay, people who who didn't like the too light-hearted uh, v version from the 1997 probably also say, okay, this is too happy. So, But yeah, within that realm of happy Berserk intros, I just think it's uh, awesome. And I honestly, would, would you really prefer a dark, completely fitting intro? Maybe that's like the, the, the puck at the beginning, you know, the little bit comedic relief at the start and then you go into the sinister shit <laughs> you know like uh, i i wonder yep. if it was just uh, uh not optimal communication back then or if they really decided to okay let's make an intro that is not really fitting but uh to to at least have some spark of joy at, at the beginning or if it really was just like okay that band who made it uh or the crew who made it didn't even watch the anime because if they did they they would have uh, noticed that it's kind of unfitting you know but maybe it was done intentionally T talking yeah, about I, the original. i think it's i think it's done intentionally uh or i would i would like guess blame <laughs> then if they wouldn't do it intentionally <laughs> um yeah yeah I, i i can totally uh agree with you there like that they took inspiration from the original and i think that's perfectly fine it's just If if I have a problem with the original and they try mm -hmm. to be as close to the original as possible, then of course, the problem will remain. And yeah. I think yeah, that's what that's I... not that's really not really their fault, at least. Uh, or they did it as best as possible. And I think if they are perfectly fine with what they did and happy uh, of the result, then I think that's all that matters. Yeah. So yeah, no, no, no hate haters here, but just <laughs> yeah, like I think uh, we we uh, conveyed our points pretty solid. <laughs> I will pretty listen. Solid. I will listen to it uh, over and over again. I okay. I have to say, in in the hook, I, I just go with this word. I don't know if people understand what what we mean, but uh, I, the I, I the refrain. <laughs> I really like the melody and also how it like the. Um, The melody has those two parts, like the guy singing and also in the background there's the synthesizer, or I don't know if it is a synthesizer, but it sounds like a synthesizer, which also plays the melody and I, I it just, it, it gives me some uh, retro vibes. I, I'm really into, uh, you know, old video game music and I, I completely love it. <laughs> yeah, so a shout out. I, I know Poliostasis um, wrote the lyrics, that's, uh, the credit says that, so uh Huge oh, yeah. shout out to Polystasis and also to the whole music department. Um, yeah, you did an awesome job. And yeah, there's no doubt about that. And also, as you said, the pictures are just whew, uh, crisp and clean, perfect. Like, and also fit, yeah. fit the lyrics when they say, uh, we're in this nightmare going nowhere. And you have guts walking with that wall of fire in front of him. It really yeah. emphasizes what, what they're saying. And yeah, great. Great. All right. Do you do you do you mind if we go on? <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, I mean, if something crosses my mind again that is related to the intro, uh, yeah, and, and, just and maybe one it. thing, uh, like one small thing is, of course, like um, you you could also say that is kind of obligatory. But I really liked how they how they put it uh, in the end of the intro, dedicated in loving memory to Katar Mura. I think that's really important. I'm glad they did it. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and okay, now that we're talking about minor details, I like how the Berserk logo is um, split by, half, by yeah. Stroke. Yeah, that, that's cool. And also, as you said, how the the eclipse, uh, the covered sun opens its eyes and then it suddenly crithes and also the, the lyrics change and now it's about Guts not uh, feeling like he doesn't know Griffith anymore and it, it's just so perfect, like the overall uh, orchestration is, yeah. Very nice. 
<laughs> okay, um, All right. so uh, let's get into the chapter's content. <laughs> yeah, we're like um, in the scenery with rain and heavy thunder and Guts uh, with scratches on his cheek is walking right through the rain. And it really, it, it really like wakes up old memories from the 97 adaptation oh. um, where he was... Like, it wasn't a different scene because he was walking towards the city where the snake apostle was hiding. Oh, yeah. And right now it's like, in, it's, it's similar, but in a kind of different way because we see a wagon coming up and uh, this old man, who looks like a priest, is starting to talk to Guts. And um, yeah, as we know Guts, he is like, always rejecting everyone who who talks to him and who he, who is unknown to him like perfectly mm -hmm. perfectly guts mm -hmm. and i think this is one of the major scenes which could be like just just be taken from the original because it really is similar in a in a way um to to the original adaptation the original adaptation the original adaptation yeah all right that was stupid but like the 97 adaptation ah, okay yeah, yeah yeah like okay but they they could have included it that's what you wanted to say like uh, in the 1997 yeah. yeah they wasn't like the black swordsman arc what just one episode with the snake guy yeah yeah it, yeah, was, it yeah. was like just just the beginning and after that uh they immediately switched to to the golden age arc mm. and they also didn't have puck which is a huge uh trade down for me like, like of course they they chose to make it as efficient as possible, but as Puck is no part of the Golden Age arc, they decided to not include him. But yeah, um, that's the cool thing about this uh, um, adaptation that Puck is a part of it. And I have to express my huge respect for the art style here. Um, I will probably be doing it over and over again in this episode, but just as a starting, like. The good old 97 look, Jimmy completely nailed it here. I hope I'm not disrespectful yeah. calling him Jimmy here. I'm just going to go with Arch to be on the safe side. Arch <laughs> completely nailed it here. Like, it could be straight cut off the the anime. Like, um, especially those ridiculously good backgrounds. Like, those are fully fleshed out paintings in my eyes. <laughs> and the, the, also the colors. It's all muted, grounded colors perfectly fitting yeah. the moodiness of the scene so i'm i was very um shocked in a positive way that it's that good we've already seen in some trailers uh how good it is but i i don't know i was kind of uh, in denial when watching it yeah when it uh yeah. um aired for the first time we were both watching the premiere so yeah <laughs> Totally, like um, we we saw, for example, we saw it where, uh, with this with this tiny video where uh, where they drawn a ending to the ninety seven anime, which is more faithful to the manga, like where where School Knight uh, saves Guts and Casca, and they already there like nailed it perfectly. But it's uh, it's a complete new level if you if you if you view it as a whole episode, like Arch Studio. Or Jimmy, who who pretty much like carried the whole animation, did this for a twenty five minutes straight, and I, hmm. I really hope we don't have to wait another ten years for the next uh, episode. Just not. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, really, really great work. You you just can't deny it. Then they, like, of course, there are sometimes minor details very well, which which are like, of course, meeting the eye. But that's that's nothing in comparison to the whole uh, stuff to the overall package that got delivered by Arch Studio. Yeah, and one also one thing I was pondering about because in the original anime, the guy or the guys, the people who were responsible for the background for the environmental um, drawings and so on, were not the same guys, or not exclusively as the people who made the animations who drew uh, drew the characters. You know, but in this case. He did both. That's what's so intriguing to me. Like it's a complete different thing, um, drawing those. How is it called? It looks like it's it's a uh, watercolor. No, I don't know. But the backgrounds have a certain certain style, and it really mm. fits the original. And yeah, they they hired different guys, but here he just nailed both of it. So <laughs> that's even yeah. more impressive to me. 
impressive to me. Yeah, definitely. And like um, you, I think we will say it not only right now but later on as well. But uh, you can't, um, you can't, re you really can't blame the whole art style. You you, you can't compliment it enough. Yeah, is it watercolor? Sorry, I'm so uh, improvising here. But there's this, this is a certain technique of uh, drawing uh, paintings. Like, uh, hmm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the, the priest starts talking to Guts. And maybe we can use this as a start to talk about the voice actress, if you don't mind. Um, like, how, how was your overall impression from the voice actress? I, uh, I'm, I'm like looking at parallel to, to as we're talking right yeah. now. And um we we already like said it in our interview with art studio that i think the um i think that the voice actor for guts uh really like really can put his his voice in a way that would resemble um guts as we know him or as we would imagine that he's talking mm. um one little thing yeah i i think i already told it to you mm. and that is that is not criticizing them in any way really not it's just it's just my personal dream it would <laughs> be perfectly if they had japanese voice actors for that yeah, but okay. <laughs> but yeah listen listen but they but you can't blame them for that like they 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 are in, in fan studio trying their best as possible uh using everyone and everything they had uh like getting getting their hand on any straws that they could use so there's nothing wrong with uh with the english voice actors but like it's my it's my per personal favorite like if i if i watch an anime it has to be uh, with japanese voice actors but that's just a personal thing and it's it's not an issue with the adaptation itself it's just it's just my my thing my i don't know my my fetish so to say <laughs> your fetish let's, let's yeah, that's... theorize a little bit about it do you think if they had the the possibilities you know the resources the people uh speaking japanese uh fitting voice actors do you think they would have uh decided to go that way like also from a perspective of reach you know i know many many um people who watch anime or read manga are also okay with or even prefer as you do um watching it in the original with subtitles but do you think in terms of reach it it It, it would have fared even better if it wasn't Japanese. Mm. Debatable, right? That's debatable if, 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 if it would like have reached more people. Like the, the other, um, like this, uh, this 18 minute long Rosine fight, which was published by, I think, Japanese, a Japanese fan studio, uh, had, is also close to 400k views, which is not as much as, as the, like the pilot of Art Studio. But still, really uh, did really well in terms of um, in terms of clicks. Mm. Because do do you think most people who are capable of the <laughs> English language uh, watched it in English? I, I have to admit, I watched it in English. Um, um, it wasn't a very uh, conscious decision. I just found it in English on YouTube, and it it's a few years back, so I wasn't that much into watching animes in Japanese. So I just watched it, and I I loved the English. Uh, voice actors so for me it's like uh for me it's perfect yeah, yeah, okay. but i also get yeah. like everything else that i'm have been watching from that point on was japanese with english subtitles so um yeah exactly. I, i get like, both so, yeah, sides i think i think at first when i started looking anime i was like looking at it in german and then i i just oh, realized german. that uh, <laughs> that japanese was way cooler so i immediately switched to that and i don't regret it like i i would i wouldn't switch back Hmm. under any circumstances yeah no yeah I, i just thought maybe it's it's smarter to uh to do it in english in in terms of reaching as many people as possible yeah and and like i said of course like using everything they had and like hmm. uh it, it's i think it's already hard enough to get their hands on some capable voice actors uh which are not in the official or not in the like How, how do you say like in the in the official studio mid-year maybe uh like like having fans or doing Brazil. this full-time 
Yeah. Yeah, not doing this full time is the right word. But still, they, uh, they... And, and and like try to to maybe contact Japanese people who are who are fitting and yeah, like I I I can get why they did it and and it's fine this way. It's just completely. Yeah, yeah they like although they're not doing this full time, they got their hands on awesome, capable voice actors. Like I'm, like my overall impression. I just want to get it out here uh, from the voice actors is just great. Like there are a few little things we might uh, talk about, but um, if if you want to, but overall it's very satisfying. Like it it was very fitting, and I I can't mm. wait to see or to hear those other voice actors. I can't wait to hear Ubik. I can't wait to hear uh, Krithith, of course, and all the other yeah, ones. And Void, like Void, of course we we already <laughs> and like Void. Heard voice. <laughs> but like um, if, if it comes to the uh, eclipse. Uh, not the eclipse, but like the sacrificial offering of the count, then I can't wait to to hear Void's voice in action. Yeah, it's time to start the invocation of doom. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like Tosca's voice is unmatched. Yeah, yeah. Here again, we are the Tosca fan club. Like, yeah, we're we're completely not exclusively, but like we are pretty much our heart <laughs> is partially reserved and... for Tosca's <laughs> voice. <laughs> we are the fan club. If you ever come to uh, Germany, we will grant you a generous welcome with uh, I don't know what. <laughs> and and uh, and also, I uh, I have a friend who like listens to our podcast here and then oh, okay. and uh, and he and he like also heard the interview and like right from the start he was just like us completely taken in by the voice of, of tosca he was like i've never heard this voice before it's such an insane voice so cool yeah. like um not too not too overly uh i don't know we're already doing yeah yeah we're <laughs> already doing it so so even he and he's not into berserk or or anime or um, voice acting in general he he's completely not into that but even he was like all right this voice is insane yeah. and i mean i i heard it sometimes i i don't know i don't know I, I i don't feel like it but sometimes people are telling me all right your voice is a bit deep but like comparing it to tosca's voice even my voice is completely high-pitched yeah, yeah yeah and and also um if i like if you, if you showed some um, clip from from Tosca to a random guy, the person would probably think, okay, it's very good, it's very deep, but there has to be some huge, uh, um, you know, editing to make it sound that deep. But we, we you know, when we were sitting yeah. down and talking to Arch Studio, he was just sitting there in front of his, I don't know, a microphone or laptop, probably microphone. It sounded very good, but. Uh, there was no editing like this was he w wasn't even in in the zone so to say he said okay there's no i didn't do any practice before so this is re really um, improvised but it still sounded so good yeah. so it's just his voice i don't know how he how he got that voice <laughs> um <laughs> he, he even <laughs> he, uploaded he probably smoked too much oh that is left up for imagination but uh he uh, he maybe, just maybe he will write it in the comments <laughs> <laughs> teach, teach us how to how to get this voice teach me yeah is it possible for me okay this is my this is my basis hello my name is it possible to <laughs> no, yeah, but... I, th I think i think it's always possible to to maybe lower your voice but not not that much as much like to an extent that is uh yeah. like um like like uh voids or tosca's voice yeah he recently uploaded a new voice over from titanfall 2 so i will just put it in yeah. the description if anyone wants to listen to it it's just perfect it's just yeah awesome and also this filter that has been put on it um that makes it sound like you know uh, someone's talking through how is it called some walkie talkie uh it, it still sounds so good like uh, um, intentionally yeah. lowering the quality of the audio like um, yeah. as if you're playing Call of Duty and then someone says, uh, <laughs> "Mission failed. We we'll get them next time." It it yeah. just so, so, okay. Maybe <laughs> coming back to to uh, the other voice actors. Um, okay, with whom do we want to start? First of all, the <coughs> priest. The priest. I really like the priest. Um, I think he did an awesome job. I, I I looked into the credits and I did not know him i think i think I, we I, I will i will i will listen to his voice one short moment yeah 
I think uh, the priest like is really fitting. It's it's like this this typically grandfather voice, um, <laughs> like pretty 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 calm and like also nice uh, in talking to guts, who is a dick all the time. Yeah, and and also I like this uh, phrase very much. Um, I'm sure we'll make it just fine. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, foreshadowing at its best. Foreshadowing, yeah, and. Also, just because I, I see it um, at this moment, I, I love the amount of little details or awesomely orchestrated little scenes in this uh, in this anime. Like there, I I could make make a whole list. I I love how um, when Guts eventually decides to to join them on their carriage drive, uh, he just turns around and says, "Fine," and. Like in this very second, um, there's a thunder strike, and and we see his uh, his uh, face illuminated for the first time. His sinister look. Uh, it's just so cool. It's just so cool. Yeah. Like it, it would have been cool anyway, but this makes it so much better. And um, what's what's also talking about scenery, uh, like perfect. Like we see the rain. Uh, we see how the wagon is moving forward and uh, driving away, and then we see like. Uh, the bad spirits or the skeletons emerging from the dark and looking on on the wagon, and we just we just know that shit soon is going to go down. And then also a very very cool thing is how they how they put like these I don't know waiting pictures I don't know like where where we just see the name Berserk and everything else is black. I don't know how they how they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But um, those transitions. Also, yeah. Yeah, transitioning maybe. Uh, really, really close to the adaptation. Eh, to the original. That's <laughs> that's pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, was it meant for, like, when there was a break for advertisement in, like, originally? Do you know that? I could imagine Probably, right? that. Yeah, it's it's like uh, also with animes these days. They're like in Japanese on 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 normal TVs. Like we would watch um uh we would watch our TV shows in uh, on on TV. <laughs> and uh, like we, the animes we see are like have the have these breaks, and oh, uh, like uh, of course not. Or I'm glad that there is no advertisement in between the episodes. But I could imagine that in Japanese, there the, there are advertisements in between. Hmm. Yeah, it, like it's 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 the same when you are looking in a movie in in like on a TV channel. Like there's also advertisement in between. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then uh, we have this rather long carriage scene where they're all sitting inside and talking a little bit, although Guts is not really the chatty type here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's almost never. No, um, but honestly, I, I, I really... Like, the thing I, I like about this carriage ride the most is how they took really took their time for this to build up atmosphere. Like, it's so slowed down, N nowhere rushed at all. Like, you just have all this rain, then even more raining. Another scene, rain from below, rain on the street, very calm. Some shot shots, just pure silence and the rain. And I think that's good. Like, there's no rush, no hurry. Um, and it really builds up atmosphere, although nothing is being said at all. And... Yeah, you, I think you can e even really put yourself into their position, how they must feel sitting there. It's raining buckets, <laughs> but they are more or less dry, having the little light flickering in the middle. And I, yeah, Guts yeah, is just sitting there really thinking warm. about what what not. And <laughs> I, like, I like this. Do you dislike the rain, sir? And <laughs> how the Colette asked that, and he just stares at her as if, you're not wanting to even waste one word about something so insignificant as the rain. Like, this is yep. a short, clever way for me to convey how Guts is like without telling it directly, you know, uh, showing yep. it instead of telling. Like, he, he just couldn't care less. If Colette had been through the shit he had to endure, she'd choose uh, rainy weather every day instead. So, uh, nah, it's just... A, it's just a very cool way and also uh it gave uh the fundament for an awesome edit from tosca <laughs> on <Yeah>. instagram <laughs> because uh guts just looked like a complete chat there um 
yeah, maybe uh, coming to Kutukatsu's face for a few seconds, I think uh, they really nailed it. And they kind of um, were able to give us a face that resembles more guts further in the future uh, further in the future sorry further in the story but still looking like the 1997 anime you know he does yeah, not look not, like but guts. not looking like black swordsman exactly and i like that because um i yeah. i prefer that more refined worked out version that we are kind of used to later um yeah yeah so that that's just a cool mix in between and i also think um that they kind of how do you say like in the in the original scene if you look into the manga he is way more chattier also he he uh he's way more funny and kind of this this guy that resembles the prototype guts and remember how we talked about the early time guts and the late guts and how he feels very different due to the you know refinement over time and i feel like they put the actual guts we know later into the rather overly edgy Black Swordsman arc. Like, not the arc is, was edgy, but Guts was kind of, you know. Um, yeah. I, I compared it to the manga, and Guts was joking around all the time, kicking Puck, uh, having his smug grin. Hey, listen! Hey, I want to back off from this statement. Um, he was not joking around, quote-unquote, all the time. I really exaggerated here. But he still felt rather edgy to me especially compared to the adaptation. Hello. In this case, in the adaptation, it's the typical Guts we know. He's not wasting too many words on something insignificant. Of course, he has his humor even even later on, but um, yeah, you could really see in the manga how Guts, yeah, how he still kind of in his heart was the prototype Guts, for at least for, for some parts, and uh, I love that they decided to make him more um tranquil and yeah maybe maybe you understand yeah. what i what i mean definitely and i i think like guts's humor is very minimalistic like especially as we see later on but uh, as of right now like we get to know him as a character who is like pretty pretty silent pretty pretty tranquil even uh like he's he's also rude in a in a kind of a way yeah even to like a priest and a, a little girl but um i don't know like if you if you would be awake for several days in a row and just fight all the time like who wouldn't be in a bad mood to be honest mm. who would then start to talk about the weather being not so nice yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. and i also like how they use that um, situation that topic as a very cool transition that wasn't part of the original manga as well um you know how he doesn't answer and then but Colette completely doesn't get it and she just starts talking about how the rain you know is a sign for God's uh, anger and something like that and then they're talking about this religion topic which I know it, it just feels so natural and it doesn't come out of nowhere but it's not you know they altered that it's not uh, included in the in the manga but it's just it's just it's just perfect it's even more explicit about that religion topic than in the manga in my opinion and yeah, it's just the whole the whole wagon scene is for me a very good introduction to Guts' character. Yeah. You get a good feeling of how he acts and behaves and also what his beliefs are. And yeah, I think that's the the purpose of the scene in general, like originally, but here they kind of Yeah, they, they just did an awesome job. I don't know how to put it in different words. <laughs> What's also cool about it is like they, um, as they already told us in the interview, they're not going uh, page by page uh, through the chapter and just 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 using all uh, the same stuff that was that as we know it from from the manga, but instead they're trying to add new things and maybe cut out other things. So it really it is it's really working as in pilot episode. Like this is not the first chapter; it's the second chapter. Uh, or yeah the second or the third yeah. and uh but they like added new stuff uh to the conversations to make it work as a pilot and i think they did a really good job in adapting it in a slightly other way like the overall uh style mood and the the content is the same but like through these tiny changes in in terms of conversations and what is said and what not uh really 
really makes it work as in pilot. Like if they had used this, the second chapter as it is, it also would have probably worked as a pilot, but not as good as uh, they did it as of now. Hmm. I also think the the things they changed are, you know, it's very slippery slope not to um, to step on any toes from some diehard fans. And <laughs> but I think the things that they altered, even the most fundamental Berserk fan. I don't know. I, maybe maybe it's not true, but uh, would not care too much about it, like in a, in a negative sense. They wouldn't be, you know, uh, Colette got shot instead of uh, stabbed. I think it's yeah. just so cool how they did that, and it doesn't change, you know, the story. It's it's not a vital part that's taken away. So, I I really love how they how they really uh, used their artif uh, artistical leeway to kind of make their own thing. Uh, and yeah, maybe we can talk about those few minor or depending on how you see it, uh, changes they did. And one thing I also wanted to add is that I really like the sound design because um, now that I've, I'm watching it simultaneously, um, when they're sitting in that carriage, it, it's so it's so moody. It's a feast for my ears. So like yeah. listening to the rain trembling on that carriage roof um it's just it's just awesome the lightning in the background it's all very it all very f much feels coherent and in in the world and maybe that's a good transition to one little point i wanted to make about um the voice acting because we kind of lost it which is okay but um i i at first had a little bit uh, difficulties with Colette and Puck, uh, for, for one little reason I, I want to explain. For me, they kind of sounded at first a little bit um, like flat. Not not the voice acting, but the sound. You know, it, it kind of... Oh. As if you have intentionally... Um, yeah, took away some bass to make it, for example, fit to the cute fairy voice better, you know? It, it, it oh. kind of... Uh, um, oh gosh, sticked out from the overall environmental feeling as if you, you know, have recorded in a in a room. Obviously, it it, it was a little bit more apparent compared to the to the other voices, and I I got used to it quite quickly. Um, but that's that's just something I noticed that it sounded a little bit different audio quality wise. Maybe I don't know if if some people know what I mean. May, or maybe if even someone from Arch Studio is listening, maybe you can address that or, yeah, if, if you want. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, not blaming the voice actors, but maybe their microphone quality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. The... Um, I, I can understand what that it's like, um, yeah, it's, 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 it was not like more more of a minor issue i think yeah no and i, and I know like i know a... that you that you are not like hating it for any reason no no like i i really like uh for example colette's voice it was it just sounded a little bit out of the environment you know yeah. like her acting yeah. was was great totally. maybe, maybe let's also talk um if you want to uh about Puck because there was this completely unnecessary uh, for in my opinion bash at the premiere where some people uh, like were complaining about Puck's voice because it sounded so mature you know uh, for for example compared to I think the 2016 anime the the uh, Japanese I don't know if you have yeah. heard Puck talking it's it's completely high pitched voice no bass it could be straight from a 6 year old you know um uh, but but would you like if you if you were reading berserk uh ber berk, <laughs> berk and um berk and you're like all right um this is Puck mm. he is uh, kind of the I don't know the comic relief for the whole story yeah um what what voice would you imagine him to be it's it's hard after hearing uh some takes on it but i think like it took it even took me some time to realize that he's supposed to be male 
you know. Uh, mm. But yeah. st but still, he kind of resembles a kid. I think I would think of a rather a voice that doesn't sound mature or not as mature as uh, Puck does sound in in the in the pilot. But I have to say, like I I watched it a few times. And I really got used to it and started liking it. Like at first, I, I mean, we, we already knew the voice. So uh, this was no newsflash to us. But at first, my reaction kind of resembled some other guy's reaction. Like, okay, this is way more mature than one might have imagined. Hmm. But I don't know. After a few times, I got used to it and I really started liking the voice. I, I, I think my main quote-unquote problem with that was... Or from other people as well, like that it's just not what you expect when looking at that cute face, you know. But yeah. since he's a guy and he's probably been around some some years, it's not completely um um uh out of the picture to choose a voice for him that doesn't sound like six year old, you know? Like yeah. it's it, it, they if they had chosen void for Puck. <laughs> <laughs> that would completely be, uh, yeah, I don't know, out of their mind. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I, I think it's it's not a matter of um, how capable uh, the voice actor of, of Puck is. Like, no, no. Uh, he, I think he he gave it his all. Um, but it's more it's more of the matter of of uh, I don't know his voice in general and and for his voice like of course you can like bit change it or vary it but it's he's i think he's not he's not the one to blame for his voice no, no, because no. i think he he tried his best as uh as he imagined Puck would sound hmm. and i do think he did an awesome job like i i like how it sounded it's just uh again like everything we talk about a matter a matter of taste and i've um skimmed through some comments and like it was mainly the premiere where people were I think disrespectful, but uh, like they were not saying, oh, maybe the voice is a little bit too deep. Like they were saying, uh, exchange the cast, you know, which is, I don't know. Like, you know, the whole cast the is watching, it's listening. Like, it's not even real criticism. It's just useless bashing. And I thought that was disrespectful. Yeah. And, but uh, I, I, yeah, when skimming through the comments, I also saw people who were like, okay, at first I thought, hmm, but but I really like Puck's voice and it's kind of the same for me. I, I have that one uh, sentence in mind where he says, we can't, have any, uh, we can't even have a normal conversation with you. And I that stuck with me. That one I really liked. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also maybe now that we're talking about Puck, I completely like his design looks wise. Like it's perfect for me. I um, I like it way uh, more than the 2016 version and everything else I've seen so far. I like I like this shimmering um, mystical green they used and also the bla uh, the black the the blue hair. I uh, yeah um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, it might be that I'm just uh, a bit more critical about this whole stuff than you are maybe, but uh, yeah, I, that's, I'm critical. That's fine, I think. <laughs> um, in my opinion, we have like this really, really um, dark style with all these uh, trimmed or, or dark colors. Uh, like I love the color palette, which is like, which has this really coherent style. I see where this is going. Very dark. <laughs> and then Puck is, I think, in my opinion, Puck's design is a bit breaking the whole uh, I don't know the whole not experience but maybe the whole picture everywhere he's in not because it's a bad design but I mm -hmm. think a rather more dark design would have also fitted for the whole for the whole adaptation and maybe I, I could also imagine that Jimmy or the whole art studio did that uh, intentionally like maybe breaking breaking the like I don't know dark mood with uh, also with his design and not only by his words uh, which is understandably and I could I could imagine that this was their intention like after all Puck always breaks the dark mood with his jokes and with sure. his behavior but like do also doing it in a in a I don't know showing sense and not also talking and 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 uh, I don't know, character sense 
I can understand why, but it's also like a one one minor detail in my opinion that's like, all right, I, I would have preferred that over this, but mm -hmm. it's fine as it is. Okay, I like I, I get your opinion theoretically, but I have to say, because they're walking through the dark, muddy forest, like uh, everything that is even a little bit bright in its color would s stick out, you know? I, I think... Yeah. Oh, and, and also, um, Puck is this mystical fairy creature from from that island. So I think, of course, he stands out. Like I, I don't disagree with you, but I, I don't know because there's some depictions of him um, on some original Berserk covers, which I really don't like. Example, for example, um, when he's having, you know. A white skin color just like a, a like a person with white skin uh i don't like that one because maybe it's just a problem for me but it's this whole explicity thing it, then you probably you basically have a naked little boy flying next to you all the time you know like also yeah. with the newest chapter um cover and i like that they chose something that You know, it doesn't make you think about that all the time. And it looks mystical. It looks uh, out of this world. And I've seen a few covers. I, I did a little bit of research. Like Puck, even in the, the headcanon cover, so to say, Puck was depicted in a few different ways. Like there are some covers where he's completely like a white skin color. Then there's also one from the... Um, I think it was volume 22. This is my favorite cover. Maybe I can, I, I, I downloaded it. Maybe I can quickly send it to you where he kind of looked like that one with this green I can't really describe any better. And then there was also one where he looked kind of purple. So I think they they had so much uh, so much possible ways they could go. And I, I like the one they chose because you said uh, maybe they could have made him more fitting to all those dark muted colors. I'm curious, which color would you would you have chosen it would, if it was up to you? <laughs> Something darker. <laughs> like, but but um, brown a brown uh, pack would bra be could be weird, right? <laughs> Maybe like his skin looks a bit greenish. Maybe like trying to make it more looking like a human, and mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, of of course, like they had to. Um, Wait, I'm searching searching something up. I will send you the I've just sent you the the picture, my my favorite cover from Berserk actually. And I think Yeah, and, and they're like like a Puck has green hair and uh in the in the in the in Art Studios adaptation he has blue hair. Ah, okay. Which is which is okay. So it's all. so like, it's not about the skin color that much, it's more about the wings and the hair for you. Yeah, but I also like saw other illustrations where Puck has um pink hair you know like it's yeah, okay. it's it's not really their fault like trying to use blue hair it's 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 pretty okay after all like i said um it's it's more like I, in my opinion like breaking the illusion to some extent the illusion of him being no the no no the the illusion in general like the the experience in general of the episode which is pretty dark Okay. That that's my point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So me, we disagree on that, but it's actually cool to see how we disagree on some parts where I was kind of sure about. Okay, you're on the same boat here, but uh, or on the same yeah, side. I'm, but after all, like may maybe I'm just a bit overcritical with ah, some okay. points. Like like really, um, if if Arch Studio or, or some people from them are listening, I said it before. It's just uh, my opinion, and you did great work. It's just it's just me being picky and really being critical about something yeah. and like that's what we're doing after we're we're talking about all the major and minor details and going in depth and not uh not trying to bash anything mm. and uh, they're probably used to that like they they were talking about some people complaining about the guts like the, the color of guts's cape and that's such a like well, seemingly honestly, minor detail but uh yeah I can't, I can't complain about Guts' design in general. Like there are so many designs, no one really can, can like, um, I don't know, complain about. Like the priest really uh, looks really good. The little girl uh, was nailed. Oh, oh not no, it was nailed. Um, the design was nailed. Oh God! And and sorry, that that really was just uh, unintentionally hmm? okay. 
<laughs> unintentionally. This time, this joke was unintentionally. Thank you, you have to believe Thank me. you. And, and, um, and with, with uh, Guts himself, there is nothing to complain about, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, like matching with uh, the atmosphere, with the music and um, the voice actor uh, who really, really uh, changed his voice like we, we had in, in, in the interview. And I was really surprised on how well he can change or how well he can make his voice uh, being, I don't know, more similar to a gutsy voice. <laughs> something like that yeah uh, at first i thought because we were talking like he in his normal voice for some time and i was okay i'm i'm really i'm really eager to hear him doing some lines because maybe maybe i don't know void with his very deep voice would be more fitting but then he started talking and it's it was just completely switched out completely changed and it was so fitting and i was like okay yeah, this is what voice actors are doing, changing their voices to make them fit to a certain character. Um, awesome job. And also the other voice actors, Casca. I, I, I read some comments on Casca's voice. She's really fitting, I think. Like, it really reminds you of of the Casca you know. And one, one, yeah. one little thing, Ju- Judas voice. What do you think about Judas voice? Because it's way deeper than the original. Do you have wait, wait, wait. problems I have with that? To, I... I have to um get to the get to the get to the moment where he's where he's um It's in the dream scene. Uh yeah, yeah, I'm, ten, I'm, 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 ten, right. ten minutes, ten seconds. Five seconds. Uh one one little detail as I'm watching through is like how his eye is already bleeding in his dream, like um kind of showing his his eye later on or the the state his eye is in. Hmm. Alright. Where is judo? Here is judo. Uh, you know, I'm I'm still I don't know defending my point of judo being a woman. So <laughs> listening listening to a male voice actor is uh, is really strange for me. Um, like I will I will defend that point no matter what. Even yeah. though I'm completely I have been completely proven wrong in the past. I'm still defending my point that sh- that judo is is female, uh, but still, I, yeah, the voice actor. I I, f- I feel like saying a voice actor is fitting or not fitting is a really really hard thing to do. Of course, we we have examples. For example, we have examples. For example, yeah, best English sentence ever. Um, we have. Um, Instances. For example, <laughs> um, uh, like. <laughs> voices from Tosca and there is no better void voice actor than Tosca like there would be no one better fitting and I think who is also really really fitting is Guts and of course there are like other voice where you where you could debate on all right is this perfectly fitting uh but I feel like you have to more talk about how their performance is rather than how fitting they are of course you can't like put a little girl for an old man that would really be unfitting but after all, like in general, they they try to hit the spot, and I think ninety percent of the time they they actually achieved what they wanted to achieve. I, f- I, f- I feel like it this way. Okay, so you, I just wanted to find out if you're as diehard Berserk fan as uh, you know to, to say okay, no, Judo has to be this higher voice because. It was like that in in the original uh, anime, or if you like, ah, I don't care as long as the voice actress is good. I mean, this is one line we we heard from uh, hear from from her from judo. Um, so yeah, because I don't really care that much. Like I, I know the original anime, I know how it was, and now this is a new thing, so it doesn't change judo for me. Maybe it's a bit um, weird at the beginning because you're not used to it, but yeah. You know, I just wanted to to uh, to find out what kind of a person you are <laughs> in, in, yeah. in terms of uh, being very, very maybe picky or narrow-minded about certain details. But I already knew that you're rather relaxed. So <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like it's not like we're 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 hating on anyone after all. No, but you but you could still say okay, this completely ruins it for me because uh oh, Coolette was killed by an arrow, not by by, by this uh, other thing. Yeah, so uh, 
like I said, I really, I really, um, it's it's not like I'm being being critical in a negative way all the time. Like criticism can also be positive, but I know that the word criticism really sounds negative, and most of the time it is negative. What you are talking about if you criticize something, but um, giving them honest feedback is, I think, more important than just than just how do you say in English, uh, putting um, bashing. No, putting honey around their mouth. Oh, so <laughs> say that in English. Buttering them up. Yeah, buttering them up. I think I think if we if we give them honest feedback about certain details that might change or could be changed, um, I think it's it's more useful for them than just saying, "All right, everything is perfect." Yeah, they they would not want to listen to two hours of us saying it's perfect, it's perfect. But maybe yeah. they would. I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh... Yeah, like uh, we we are <laughs> after all we are always complimenting them on on the on the great work they did. But after all, it's it's not only it's not only them. It's like if you if you talk about a TV show or a movie or an anime from a professional studio in general. Even though they have high budget and have the most talented people ever, there are still always details you could say. All right, this could be ch you, this could be changed, or I think this would be more fitting in in this context. So it's it's not only the case with this adaptation they made. It's it's the case with I don't know everything. And to quote um, to quote uh, Altered Carbon here, which is one of my favorite TV shows. Um, Nothing made by humans is perfect. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I will, I will take it to heart. Uh, <laughs> how how did you come up with this sentence? Did, did you do some research, or was it just improvised? Uh, it was improvised. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, now that we're already talking about minor details and every whether we like them or not, there's one detail i was thinking about for all right for now, it's starting. Yeah, now it's um, starting yeah <laughs> and now it's started yeah like there is this scene where um puck is intervening and kind of bashing guts for you know the way he he's talking and he he says people like him i don't know if that's the right phrasing are always like that they are like mad dogs How can anyone become so sad? And th this wasn't in the original, but how how do you feel about that, those sentences? Like, they are like mad dogs, because we know it has some history, this sentence. And also, how do, uh, do you feel about how can anyone become so sad? Maybe it's if it's too too detailed of a question, then I just uh, gave out my opinion. If you, if you like, okay, what... What does he want from yeah, you me? Can, but... you, you, you can you can state your opinion first, and I'm going uh, I'm I'm going to add on that. Okay, because as of first of all, I think you have to you know have to have Puck saying something because it's like you, you could have chosen to go that way of okay um, showing his inner monologue. You know, maybe that kind of would have pulled us out of the overall atmosphere, but they decided. To let him talk, so it's a way to show Puck's thoughts uh, in essence. Um, mm. And I th also think because he, as an elf, feels all these emotion and has no clue about why they are there in the first place. Um, it's also cool to uh, how do you say? Uh, I'm kind of I'm, I'm stuck here. Uh, Like after he after knowing guts for some time, Puck kind of gets behind those emotions, you know, like uh, yeah. knows where they're coming from, and it's it's a cool, over caricatured or not maybe not even over caricatured way to to show us how repelled he is by guts's behavior at first. Like nothing makes sense for him. At first, he seems like the dumbest, bloodiest fighter that only wants to kill people and that's oh. also his impression in the manga and here they kind of uh emphasized it very much by even letting him say they are like mad dogs i i was a little bit um weirded out by that sentence just because you know yeah, uh that history yeah yeah it, like, we know that sentence and It was a little. It felt a little bit harsh for me. I know Puck is very honest and always tells Guts what he thinks, 
but I'd say in a rather humorous and kind of still sensitive, ironical way. And yeah, if it, if it wasn't for the rich history of this expression, Mad Dog, I probably would be totally fine with it. But there, it's it's a little bit, it was a little bit too insulting for me. N not a major deal breaker or trade down or anything like that. I just felt like, oh, okay, they used Mad Dogs, but uh, mm. how can anyone become so sad? It's just perfect for me. Like, uh, you see this man who's completely broken, acting edgy uh, and not caring about anything. Uh, yeah, it, there must have been something like in his past that turned him into that. Yeah, definitely. So, like, um, and especially, sense. especially like the uh, the sentence how can someone be so sad yeah uh referring to his past and like his past as we know it with was really hard with Gam uh, with gambino uh and of course like the 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 two words mad dog which are said by casca uh and like really talking about past and mad dogs in the same sentence is pretty fitting but also on the other hand um kind of a rhetorical device i would say like an oxymoron in my opinion that is kind of merging two aspects to that together that are not contradicting each other but doesn't really fit in the same context but it but here right now it fits even though it shouldn't oxymoron uh, do you mind oxymoron. if you edu educate me on that oxymoron is yeah, um I, I I can't describe it in English. Is it like so black I'm, uh, black milk? Is that an oxymoron? Uh, I think that was an example in my school. <laughs> in my a, a figure of speech in which yeah. apparently contradictory yeah. terms appear in conjunction. Um, oh, okay. Faith unfaithful okay. kept him falsely true. And and uh, <laughs> it's German. Which uh, which one was an oxymoron? Oxymoron. Like like um, putting putting. How can someone be so sad? uh um Next like two. using using his past and also using mad dogs in the same sentence mm, I, yeah, I feel okay. like it's it's not contradicting but it's also it's also really um i don't know i think it's quite still fitting in the in the moment it's fitting but it yeah. shouldn't fit it, it's quite profound because puck already assumes there being a reason for that because he, he could have just like he could have just said why is he such an asshole, you know? <laughs> but he he already uh, kind of gets a glimpse or at least anticipates there being a reason. So he's so sad and that is why he's acting like a mad dog, you know? So it's yeah. already implying this uh, this reason. And I think also the transition here is perfect because, you know, Puck is giving him the big judgment club, says Mr. Depressive, death this kill that guys like him don't care about anything besides swinging the damn sword around how can anyone become so sad and then um it transitions to this dream scene yeah puck how <laughs> that that's the way you know like uh he we are being shown his past and it's kind of the answer to to puck's question immediately afterwards and yeah. we, we don't get that much much context you know like if you are new to berserk the stream scene won't give you all the answers to to this question but you at least know okay there was some horrifying stuff in his life so that's yeah. why he became this tortured man who acts and behaves like his whole life is a battlefield because his whole life is a battlefield so i i, I really like i i didn't quite notice at first but when i watched the second time i was like okay this narration is very good it, it fits so perfectly even even better now there's one more alteration we can talk about than the original one i would say like i i, I like this uh demon child this overly sized demon child and guts who's um in that in that maze you know uh fleeing from that thing and then then he steps on that arrow and but here we get more context and yeah, we get more context. It, it kind of answers that question of Puck better. Um, yeah, I, I feel very good about how they, how they did that. Although, you know, some, some fans might think, oh, why did you change it? And also the overall composition of the dream sequence was really intriguing to me. At first we saw, clearly saw that 
this was guts at a very young age and like <laughs> the overall art style i want to compliment it again it completely nailed like the look of the 97 anime even like the, the color palette was as if the he had the exact same colors you know it looked it just looked uh perfect but then it merged to a later point in his past and we we saw that clearly like that guts was more mature at that point and also this um this transition between those two points in time where kind of maybe his more happy quote-unquote time was then overshadowed literally in the scene uh by what happened next and yeah i like how they still kept it very vague we did not know what exactly happened like i think we even if you were new to berserk you you would have understood it that way that this scene is rather a like a a weird nightmare version of what actually happened than the exact uh event you know mm. like it's kind of a a little snippet so people know okay something horrible happened and yeah i don't know i just i i, I love this dream scene yeah the dream scene is really insane especially with that last shot where the eclipse is like raining down blood on guts mm -hmm. and everything turns just like it, it begins with the, with these people and with this no nostalgic uh, sentences all the lost people uh, are saying to him and like really turns into this nightmarish scene with the skeletons with the blood and all the screams and after that uh, we see how um like everyone gets the brand of sacrifice or like or like the no not the bread but every brands of sacrifices are like merging with each other and uh yeah I, I i really i really love how they did it and then putting just one of the most clean transitions ever uh from from the merging of the green lights into guts eye like the transition was really clean and i loved it and this this dream scene in general is hits pretty hard if you if you know the background so i think they did a pretty good job on that Hmm. and and also one minor detail i wanted to address as you said this his already um injured eye or or uh popped out i don't know <laughs> is kind of the weird element that already repels you and you know okay there's something wrong because at first th this could have been a nice dream you know him uh standing there on that meadow beautiful colors and then he turns around you're like why why is his eye popped out and there's this one peculiar detail that maybe then triggers another event in the past that kind of triggers um what 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 came next and i also like that like maybe maybe i'm not i don't fully understand that detail but uh like uh, the intention behind it but it's probably, you know, nightmares are always weird and nightmares oftentimes mix things up that actually don't belong to each other. Um, yeah, and I that's why I, I really like that. And in in the interview, they said, don't worry about the horror part. Like, they, they definitely did not miss that. Like, Casca screaming, her, her uh, face fully covered in blood. That kind of shocked me when I heard it first. I'm gonna be honest. Like if you yeah. if you listen to or watch this scene with headphones very, very loud, I I even got goosebumps because I know the whole magnitude of that situation. I know all the background. I've read through it several times and it was so shocking her, her seeing her face and then her scream. Yeah, I, I they did an awesome job. And did you know that they even used some fans uh screams for that scene like they said hey if you if you want to re uh, record a scream and send it to us we are currently searching da, da, da. and then they kind of merged them all together to this great screaming scene <laughs> yeah that's, funny. that's pretty pretty cool detail honestly I, li I like how they how they or that they did it in such a way that's pretty cool like using using the audience and the fans in the project i think even even though it's not a not a big part i think it's just a cool detail and a cool feeling yeah so you do you like the horror part i really liked it it was really moody it really it really fits or it really matched the whole 
the whole mood in Bers of Berserk in general, maybe like uh, the horrifying eclipse and um, and how the things or like teasing us what will happen later on and how shit went down. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. And also that none of those of their eyes can be seen makes the scenes um, a little bit more odd and I yeah. don't know, it's just so fitting because you feel like, okay, something is wrong here, you know? Like, yeah. are those his friends? Because they are not, you can't really see their whole face and that makes you, makes you wonder if they're, like, what, what's going on here? Like, is this an intrigue or why, why don't they look at Guts and then uh, they all start to vanish and it's just so, he's alone in the middle, uh, no clothes on, fully covered in blood, it's just... Yeah, horrifying. definitely, definitely one of the um, of the best scenes of the whole of the whole episode, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, awesome addition, like uh, to to the overall episode. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, like this is also a change, as you said before, like going away from the demon infant, but um, in terms of um, maybe, as I said before, changing the the chapter or the episode in in favor of being a pilot episode i don't know maybe maybe also was the right decision to not like get the demon infant right now you can still do that later on but maybe teasing us or giving us foreshadowing on his past and uh, also like getting some details like the the demon infant of course is a part of guts's um guts's past but his friends for example, Judo or Pippin or like Casca, who was his lover or is his lover, yeah. um, is maybe even more important to mention or to show in a pilot episode. Mm -hmm. What, by the way, what does I I don't know what does pilot mean essentially? Like, uh, does it imply that something has changed? I I so I'm sorry, I'm not well enough educated here. Like pilot, doesn't it just mean like the first, the first yeah. one? Oh, okay, uh, because it sounded as if you were like uh, describing a pilot episode as being a little bit more free in interpretation, but then uh, I just got it wrong. No, okay. the pilot episode is just the first episode. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and also, I think it's they did well in deciding to make it as horrifying as possible because this is basically what Guts has to endure every day. Like, he's he's not sleeping well, and if he's sleeping... He's got those reoccurring nightmares, and now we maybe have an understanding of why he is so repelling in real life. Like why he's so also stressed out. Maybe not indulging in minor superficial chats. If that is how his resting <laughs> looks like, you know, like he's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He just Pretty bad to resting. get some rest, yeah, and and they, it also um, leads us to the situation where he's then waking up and something seems to have happened, like Colette is uh, f freaking out, and th there was this incubus in the original, right? This uh, yeah. this creature that kind of feeds on people's nightmares or something like that, or yeah, yeah, and. I just wanted to address it. I think uh, it's completely, uh, completely okay that they didn't include it because it it g never gets mentioned again. So it's not very important to the story. It's just him having a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, like that they that they did this change. Yeah. After uh, yeah, like like one of the other changes that are fitting for, for like the whole vision or for the whole scenery. Uh, Especially like n having in mind that this incubus, even though Berserk is full of monsters, never gets mentioned again. No. Maybe maybe he will he will be the vital part for defeating Griffith, and we will get to see another another incubus uh, in the in the upcoming chapters. But I highly doubt it. <laughs> the vital part for defeating Griffith. Yeah, sure, sure, uh, sure. Hope sure. So. <laughs> and... Yeah, like after all this time, <laughs> an incubus comes back and just defeats him. Yeah. How cool would that be? Mm. There, there's still some details I wanted I uh, want them to address again, but I don't know if they if they really will do it. Like 
Yeah. There's so much uh, because there's like nothing is a coincidence. Is kind of what we say all the time with Miura. Everything that's being mentioned kind of has its uh, relevance in the story. And I think some parts seemed really important, but never got mentioned again. So that's why I want to hear like this this ancient big city at the bottom of this uh, tower, you know, where they rescued Quithith, mm. um, where all the people had sacrifices on their brand of sacrifices on their uh, forehead and you kind of did not know why and there's a theory about it i won't mention it now but uh this but has they discussed to... it in the in the manga like they yeah, discussed you know, the... yeah, yeah yeah they talked about it but uh we never got an explanation maybe we don't even have to get an explanation for everything we already talked about it. what kind of story is it if you you know, this Berserk is not Wikipedia where every little detail is explained because then it kind of can lose its magic and you know maybe yeah. I'm expecting too uh, much here. So I, I think there 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 are some explanations but also but but only fragmental or fragmentally. Um especially like in the same scene where we were talking about, like Judo talked about it and also Princess Charlotte. And of course it was like not the answer to everything, but I think they made it uh, so that everyone could understand or maybe maybe get the theory in mind what happened there or what happened a thousand years ago. Mm. Yeah, let's see what <laughs> what will await us in the future. Hopefully they won't rush it, but yeah, <laughs> we can just hope, we can just pray. Can they hear our prayers? Here it is again. <laughs> Okay, um, so he wakes up and then the chaos is about to start. The chaos is about to start, yeah. And he gets out of the carriage and first of all, here again, like this thing that makes atmosphere go sky high is just those lovely implemented details that catch your attention, kind of sprinkled across the episode. And I would even say that this is underestimatedly important for an interesting coherent feeling world you know like uh those l um those loving details for example this crow sitting on that branch i kind of mm. uh, <laughs> skipped back and uh, watched it again just because i found it so it's so beautiful like it was not necessary but it just uh adds to the atmosphere and then also that the carriage um is this even the right word the the wagon is being mirrored in the crow's eye. Yeah, it's just such an awesome detail. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's like a pretty high attention detail. So it's um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, as said before, Jimmy did a really well job. Not only like getting the whole scenery done, but also like adding these these seemingly minor details who just um, just just match with the overall stuff. Like imagine there would be I don't know. A funny bird up there it wouldn't be as cool as a crow you know hmm. but maybe we can i want to i don't definitely want to talk to uh the guys who made this again but uh i i'm wondering because okay jimmy is responsible for the for the animation for the art uh, mostly but there are some like directors and I, I i'm not good with those expressions but also writers so we are always addressing uh, Jimmy here, but I don't know, maybe the overall um, uh, composition of scenes and what is being shown, yeah, um, came from another person, you know, like, uh, yeah. okay, now yeah, there's maybe, this Maybe crow. Apples was like, yeah, put put this uh, put this little detail in, I would, I would love to see yeah. that. Or he just came up and asked Apples and she just hmm. gave her permission. Hmm. hmm. Maybe I'll yeah, ask are, them afterwards because, uh, yeah. like, I I we I haven't asked that much in our interview about those, uh, like a project intern dynamics, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I don't know. We we had other things to talk about, but uh, that's something I want to catch up on definitely. Um, how I, because they they in, like implied that there is some, like, uh, communication difficulties just just language wise so i don't know how close they are and okay maybe let's make this scene and then 
it's the crow and he uh, implements that or if it's if it's like him drawing everything then giving it to the rest and they uh, work with what they get but they also said he's very good in accepting uh feedback and changing things according to that feedback so i i, I assume they worked quite closely uh, together but yeah, yeah maybe maybe, maybe he had find. like some prototypes and some scenery some scenes and was sending them over and they they like gave their honest feedback as we both are doing right now and maybe like through that certain details um about about the whole atmosphere and in the episode in general like came to came to came to light um yeah he gets out i, I like the detail how he touches his brand and then you know he get he got the bandages on his hand and it's it's full of blood so he knows okay there's something wrong here there's some uh demon like creatures nearby and then he just starts talking uh you know we shouldn't we don't have time to be stopped by and then an arrow just flies by his head like he he um almost got hit by that arrow and another great detail like him being murdered on that arrow's tip is just this is just so cool like i yeah. I, I didn't expect that to happen it it uh was really um out of nowhere in in the most yeah. literal sense yeah like um the whole art style i think limits fluid action but i think this is uh, this is a kind of action that really fits fits to the whole um to the whole adaptation to to the whole uh art style like having these slow moments was still so epic that's that's pretty cool yeah and yeah that's an interesting thing do you know the art art style or do you think the art style per se limits the dynamic the action or do you think they you know like it, it would still be possible to make a very dynamic quick yeah, fight yeah it would be or... possible but i think you have to you have to you you have to be cautious to not make it look uncanny you know like you mm -hmm. have this you have this old art style and if the characters would move or if everything would move in a a uh, more fluid way as animes are like being animated today it would maybe look cool on one hand but it could also look uncanny on the other mm, i haven't thought about it yet but it does make sense if i imagine it being completely like imagine this art style and then jujutsu kaisen like fights <laughs> yeah yeah like really weird. of course i i love the fluid animations of something like chainsaw man demon slayer or jujutsu kaisen but this is like this is being inspired by the 97 anime so of course they try to match the style and yeah it's uh it's as we said before they can be better in certain aspects than the 97 anime but they will they uh, they will always be limited by the whole style and mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be a bad thing yeah no we really rather have that more segmented fighting style where yeah. You know, every every skeleton that uh, runs towards him is kind of shown in an extra clip. And it, I, 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 of course, it's not that quick and dynamic and flashy, maybe, but I still kind of like it. It's, it's very, maybe for some people who are rather used to uh, modern animes, it could be <laughs> hard to watch, quote unquote, at first. But I, I really like it and also how they play with perspectives here, you know. Like, uh, yeah. okay, there's one skeleton coming from behind. Then you see his sword, uh, you know, how he's pulling his sword over the ground, uh, um, causing sparks. And then you see another shot from another perspective, how the skeleton's just getting dismantled. And it's never, it's never boring. And there's this one shot where he kind of splits our screen, you know. Um, yeah, so you could make it boring, of course, but the overall variety of um angles and uh etc is just uh amazing here i think yeah yeah i like um i like how they really really nailed it again and uh even even though this is uh really maybe maybe slow is the wrong word but really really relaxed art style and not as fluent i think they did the best of it with the whole scenery and i think we both talked about it before that uh, this whole art style, even though 
the manga is really really detailed and i i think future animes won't do it as the 97 did but at the time and even right now i really like the approach of this minimalistic uh style trying to adapt uh, the manga yeah it's a good it's a good compromise <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah and there was one thing i wanted to talk about Ah, uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this, I don't know how to call it, but I just n name it CGI skeleton, although it's probably not the right word. But what do you think about those? Like, I saw some comments at the premiere, like, wow, why, why is it CGI? You know, uh, it came out of nowhere, but I thought maybe it's a, it's um, very hard to do that much of movement. Like for example, with those skeletons, so maybe that was a a compromise because you have one set of animations and then you can you can use it uh maybe you know uh because I think it doesn't fall out of the picture too much it, once you get used to it, but it was still at first a l l tiny l itsy bitsy uh bit uncomfortable for me because i was like yeah. why 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 cgi you know i don't know if it's cgi but you i know think what I, mean. I think it's i think it just made the whole process more easy for for the animator yeah that's what i thought too yeah you put it yeah it's, better it's, like, words. it's like using using more models uh, at the same time um but still like the overall style is is still fitting to the 97 anime especially because thankfully not every action shot is um is uh in in cgi but i but i can understand why he did it especially in such a shot where the skeleton is just running and he could just use um the model of the of the of the um of the skeleton instead of just animating it all hand by hand hmm. yeah it, it uh, felt unusual fluent you know <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah that's definitely. kind of what what uh what I noticed, but uh, then after all, a few seconds after, we have those iconic freeze frames. I just I would just call them like that. Um, impact frames. I think. Impact frames. Yeah, I love those. Like it really slow. It really slows down the whole thing. And I was when I watched Berserk for the first time, I was kind of weirded out by that because I didn't know it. But uh, now I really like it. It's just like having those little. Uh, paintings in between and you can appreciate this this moment of the skeleton getting struck by that knife i didn't like that much uh those impact frames when they when they were repeated you know like when when guts slashed through an any uh an anime a anime enemy sorry and, <laughs> and slashed through an anime yeah that's kind of what he does no uh and you saw it repeatedly you know in a few seconds as if that emphasizes the magnitude of that scene yeah like rushing yeah, I, towards I, an any uh, oh god enemy <laughs> sorry and um yeah I, I i really love how they used uh, the impact frames really made me feel like i was actually watching in 90 uh, the 97 anime yeah and here, that's that's pretty cool here we got the these um these scenes that look perfectly like the manga again like the skeleton with this one knife in its in its face uh from the side like i i love how they implemented some shots who are perfectly the same also on that carriage ride where there's this big mountain uh in the background it's i you know i compared it to the manga it's exactly as in the manga and it's just so cool it just shows their love for the original work of course but still they're doing their own thing but here and then you really see okay that's a nice nicely added detail that wasn't in the original and it kind of even emphasizes that feeling for me of okay we love the original and we still want to enhance here and there yeah and i think they did that they enhanced it also this nice detail when guts through his uh his knife into the skeleton's face and then we just saw him his cape uh slowly coming down again and also the fog that's being pushed you know towards the sides because of his throw this was just so awesome they took like five seconds for this scene alone and 
I don't know. For me, although it's slow, it kind of builds up tension for me, you know, because yes, if everything yes. is very fast, you kind of losing what's what's actually happening. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so much emphasis on one single throw. Um, I, 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 I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the same later when he when he is uh, like swinging his sword around and the next enemy is rushing towards him, so he puts out his sword, uh, points it to to the to the sky, and then just lets it lets it fall down like an X on 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 wooden, yeah. and uh, just just completely demolishes the skeleton. That's that's pretty cool. Like taking taking its time to really give the frames uh, an impact if guts gets to action hmm. and even even this tiny detail um that uh that the skeletons are like a bit not not holding back but when they see his uh his big sword um they are like hesitating for one moment hmm. and then the i like that their leader screams and he screams too and You kind of pointed out to me a few days ago, yeah. I think, that the scream of him is from a from a uh, scene. I'm looking the chapter up right now. Yeah, later on. So it, yeah, it's it's from it's from later on. Yeah. The this this kind of uh, this uh, this frame where where he screams and really really opens his mouth. Uh, Uh, <laughs> until nowhere, like uh, <laughs> having his mouth wide open and just just screaming, is um, I'm 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 sorry. It's I almost like an Easter egg. Time. I don't know if that's a word in English as well, like an Easter egg to all the for all the fans who who know more yeah. um, who yeah. can just uh, smile at it and yeah. be like, okay, it's that's cool. In, I must send it over to you. It's in chapter ninety ninety seven, uh, where he uses. Oh, no, no. He he uses immediately after that his his uh, dragon slayer for the first time, and it's oh, like okay. his first fight after recovering from the eclipse, and um, and shortly before he is he's going on his journey. Yeah, I just put them next to each other because they're they're so fitting, like uh, perfectly mirrored. Yeah, and. Uh, I really liked. Um, I, I mean, I was kind of surprised, but that was also, as I said before, one of the cool changes that they did uh, in in favor for the for this uh, for this pilot episode. I really liked how they used this frame, which is really iconic for Berserk. Like, um, I think many or like everyone who who who, who knows Berserk. Uh, also knows this this panel and they use this that they use it for the pilot episode is pretty cool yeah it's it's some uh well-deserved fan service in the in the most uh yeah positive possible right way right, you know yeah. uh <laughs> yeah, not that kind of fan service um yeah yeah like i think i think uh of course berserk in general has its fan service moments Like Mura likes to give us the typical manga anime hentai fan service, but I'm glad mm. that um, that our studio like get, got us the other kind of fan service with uh, these iconic panels, uh, which they animated or got for for impact frames. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's another iconic scene where we just see this horde of skeletons from far away, and we see there are some. Uh, Like we don't see guts at all, but we we see parts of skeletons flying around, so we know okay that he's somewhere in this mass. Um, but then he dashes out, and there's the scene that's already uh, that's also in the manga. We that's just the jumps. best scene yeah. of the whole jumps, pilot. <laughs> where he jumps through that mass, and then yeah, guess what? We got uh, Void's Void's voice again, Tosca's voice, and. It's just so cool. Yeah. It gives this a uh, very, you know, the music that's playing. I'm not a um, not an expert here. I don't know if it's rock or punky. I don't know, but it's just so cool how this music fades in. And I don't know. It's it's just I don't know if they would have done it in you know the original anime. But that's the cool thing about it. You can do it, and I think they um, they. It's not weird, you know, although you would not expect it to be there. It's just so cool because you know, we like this fighting and then it it really kicks. <laughs> it yeah. hits hard. And uh like when when I when I was watching 
the pilot for the first time like it was around it was around 11 p.m mm. in the in the night and i was just like watching it reading some of the reactions uh chatting with uh with lawrence parallel to to watching the episode <laughs> and then like out of nowhere like this, this the sentence that is presented is really uh famous like i think most of the people know about it who are into berserk but like uh void as uh as a narrator in the moment like of course he is kind of the narrator and voids um uh voids voice actor at the same time but that really really catch me off guard like out of nowhere there's this really cool voice which i adore pretty much like the fan club here again <laughs> and like he, he starts speaking out of nowhere and i was like what is happening what wow wow what the hell like it was it was so cool it was such a cool moment yeah. um with him especially with him jumping out of the crowd and slashing his way through and then like tosca's voice appearing that that was one of the coolest things i've seen ever in anime i think <laughs> in your life <laughs> yeah, yeah. Re really really uh, really cool voice of music um music uh, of, of of pictures and of uh, voice acting like peak peak usage of all yeah. these elements yeah true i totally agree uh... like uh yeah peak peak fiction and uh, also like um we are we are gathering today to celebrate this big win <laughs> we are yeah and it's so funny if you think about it void being the narrator not only for certain events but also for some scenes in between uh it's it's quite sinister you know that guy yeah. narrating guts is uh guts is alive so to say but it's it's just so but like it's it's cool on... it is fitting although it is pretty pretty sinister on the, on the other hand it's like if I if I would have to choose one apostle uh, who knows like probably everything, of course, like someone like Ubik or Conrad were like the ones who <laughs> explained everything. Yeah, of course. He mentions who Slan. Okay. Who explained everything in the in the eclipse? But I think like like as Void is presented as a character, he uh, he resembles a kind of person or character that I don't know doesn't doesn't say everything, but knows everything. You know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's he's fitting. He's kind of the hovering above deity mm. that's uh, just describing everything that's happened on that pity little world. And one one random thing, I wouldn't even be too shocked if Tosca was to disclose that he's in reality the guy who, you know, he's in reality fifty years old and he uh, he he uh, synchronized <laughs> the 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 original void in the English. Uh, up and yeah yeah he's like he, yeah. he could be his son he's like he got the perfect void voice okay now now we're doing this again but yeah yeah this scene, um, this scene gives us new material for upcoming insiders uh, so just so you guys know uh it was too big to be called a sword <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest when when he said it was much thicker my mind kind of uh i don't know went somewhere else for a few seconds but then i got myself together and it was it was epic like uh, yeah, it, is, it definitely was did they say it in the manga too it uh, it was much thicker yeah i think yeah so. and it would it was a heap of iron yeah yeah i think these are the sentences from from the manga by all accounts it was a heap of raw iron yeah crazy crazy and then yeah he sees uh smashing those skeletons one of their heads um flies towards that that uh branch and i like how the those lights uh kind of the eyes are flickering and then uh fading away that's also another nice detail after he cut yeah. off his head and yeah then an interesting scene kind of got me off guard like uh puck screams guts behind you and then there's an interesting piece of music and we see a, a drop of blood falling to the ground. What do you think about that scene? Sacrifi Sacrifico. Wait. We have been talking about this uh, in, I think, the second episode of Zodcast. This whole scene yeah. of Colette um, um. turning into that monster and how Guts 
kills her, spoiler, and you, you said that you, if someone yes. was to adapt this, then you would like them to, you, you know, uh, just like focus on, else, yeah, genau, uh, yeah, genau, sorry, German, uh, intruding here again, uh, like, uh, or maybe, maybe also white everything. Yeah, that's what you said, yeah. Uh, out, uh, because, like, in the, in the original manga, like, every, the whole surrounding, um, was, was completely white, and we just saw small details, we saw, we, we didn't saw their faces, uh, we didn't saw, I saw, I'm sorry, we, we, we didn't, uh, see their faces, and, uh, it was just, like, really minimalistic, and, uh, I, th in my opinion, like, the adaptation came close to it, with just focusing on the major details, especially the moment she stabbed him. But of course, we, we also got some close-up shots, shots, but then, uh, as Guts is looking down in shock, we, we see him completely turning black, only his, his uh, white eye, uh, only his, his still uh, intact eye is, is, is still open and white, and then he's completely slashing Aaron, her in half, and Yeah, it's it's also minimalistic in a in a in a sense, especially the the shot from above, uh, where where her like upper body is being I don't know thrown away by by the impact of the big sword, and yeah, it it's it's not it's not of course like why would they do it as I imagine, but it came pretty close, and I I like that of course, uh, as I said before, it's not the way I would do it. But it's it it actually came close, so it's like maybe maybe they listen to us as, uh, uh, but I but I highly doubt it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's pretty cool that it's it's even or it goes more in the direction that I would also do it. That's that's pretty cool, and that's why I like this scene so much. Yeah, they made it quite minimalistic and not all, all yeah. white out, but blacked out, and so they put the emphasis on on guts and Colette and. I think also after she got killed, um, and like this this very slow down scene where her torso is flying uh, to to the ground, um, and this somber, uh, thoughtful music that starts playing, this kind of gives the room to to let this yeah the the scene really sink in, you know, like okay, yeah. he has been killing all those skeletons. Sure, that's uh crazy and frightening but now he just had to kill that little girl and yeah I've, i i'm happy that they they left some time and to yeah to let it sink in and i also think it's interesting how there's then again this switch to insanity you know after after yeah. he killed her it's like okay now it doesn't matter and nothing matters at all he's just he's not caring and he's just letting his rage all out and It even looks as if he's enjoying this. You know, he's at one point just smashing that skeleton with his bare fist and even smiling at the same point. So he's just like, okay. Maybe to cope yeah, like with leaving this it all and, insane, and letting it all out. Yeah, probably to cope not, with this insane situation, you know. Yeah, and not um, not like holding back, but just using using his rage as fuel, like... Uh, we see his shocked face before where he looks down on his bloody hands and we, we can see that he's like in complete shock but after immediately after that he's like completely locked in and just uh, slaying everything else around him and that's typically, typically Guts uh, as we know him mm -hmm. like um, really really getting to business if he has to. Mm -hmm. At first, he's still thinking about it. Like there are those scenes where the skeletons are rushing towards him, and he's not reacting at first. But then he just uh, casually kills them. But then he, he, the lid completely flips, and we get those dynamic fight scenes. We have this one scene where he's slashing a few skeletons, uh, like uh, without any cuts in between, and that's pretty epic. I like this scene. This is like the the most uh uh dynamic um slashing we get to see in this uh, in this episode and so yeah it's not a matter of not being able to do it obviously but just a, a stylistic choice yeah like i i love how how it's completely 
like splitting and slashing everything else up and this this shot where he blitzes through uh, three skeletons and we just see one one like i don't know maybe maybe uh lightning <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. This this white white uh, string, and he completely sr- slashes it's, through them, yeah, like being crazy. too fast for them to even comprehend it's it. I love crazy. these shots. Yeah, like although and he then, has uh, that big heavy sword, he's just it's just like one frame. He's at first he's in front of the skeletons, then one frame after that, he's yeah. after. Like it's it's almost <laughs> you know there's some scenes in animes where people fight so fast that the wounds. Like the 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 um, oh, how can I explain it? Get ripped open after the person already addresses it. You know, he's like, uh, "Oh, that's all you got," and then the other guy yeah. says, "You sure about that?" And then, and in that moment, like the the leg gets ripped off because he's just so fast, and that kind of reminded me of this typical anime um, statistic device, and it's just it's just so cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool how he's like just. Uh, it it seems like his sword to him is not heavier than his stick is uh, heavy to us, you know. No. Um, like being being completely light work, no reaction to him, and just uh, yeah, just just getting the work done without even having problems. And yeah, I mean, we we saw we saw we see Puck's face being shocked, but uh, I really I really love the action after Guts just lost it and slashed uh, through everything in his way and the I, the impact frames are insane in yeah, this one like they are they are perfect they're, as he smashes yeah. his sword on the ground yeah yeah they really because sometimes in the in the original they were kind of pulling me out of the atmosphere and i was like they are too long they um i don't know i i just too long for me but in this case it's completely as intended probably emphasizes the magnitude of how strong this stroke must be, how powerful Guts is in this moment. And I really felt like, yes, give me those impact frames. Like, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, really, like, they didn't overuse it, uh, but they made it pretty perfect. Like, they really nailed it and just made it as long as it as they had to be, especially in an action scene. Like, it would be, I don't know, also a bit... Uh, harmful to the whole illusion uh or i don't know to how much the readers are uh, or the the viewers are into it if the impact frames would be too long you know Hmm. yeah and this blood and guts theme in the background i kind of have a little gap in uh, knowledge here because blood and guts is an existing piece of music right like I, I, it's on YouTube, and I haven't watched the memorial edition. You know, this over, uh, not overworked. I, I used that word uh, a few days ago. I mean, a re- revised, reworked uh, version of the 2013 and 14 movies. And yeah, there is a blood and guts theme online from the original Berserk movies. Do you know if this one is anything different, or even you know, uh, um, made by Arch? Because that I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's somewhere in the credits. <laughs> yeah, let's look at that because it's it's so cool. It's so fitting. Like, first of all, you have this somber, uh, slow music, which kind of emphasizes his shock over just having killed that little girl, and then hmm. he completely rages, and we we get blood and guts. And it's just perfectly fitting. It's all the music pieces in this. I I adore the music. I don't know if you know, but uh, Arch Studio has uploaded all the like the whole soundtrack on YouTube. And oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if Blood and Guts was among them, but oh, okay, okay, we forgot about something very unique. May I may I take us back a few minutes? Yes, in, uh, to the carriage scene because we forgot the the somber, the melancholic Guts theme and the iconic scene where he says, I bet he was happy. Because, ah, yes. yeah, this, yes. is, a, Sorry, this yeah. is a vital one, I think. First yeah, of all, pretty, pretty. I, I love the Guts theme they put in there. Like, you, you love. I love it. Yeah, um, like the original Guts theme sounds rather 
it is melancholic, but it, it also sounds, at least to me, as if there's hope and joy and yeah, the hope for something better implied in that song. It's it's not uplifting per se, but it's not complete despair and gloom, you know? But this one <laughs> kind of tilts in the direction of okay, here's something is cursed, here's something something is odd, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like like also adding to the whole atmosphere again. Yeah, there was this one comment. Uh, Man, Griffith's ambition really crumbled that day. His ambition crumbled so hard that even Guts' theme turned into a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, there, <laughs> there was just uh, it was funny, and I, yeah, I just wanted to uh, emphasize again how much I like the music and yeah, how it how it uh, tuned in at the perfect scene where he where he st- he he said his iconic phrase and i for me it was the perfect moment to put in that that altered version when he when he said his famous words and compared to the original scene in the manga his look was rather stressed and uh serious and maybe that's far-fetched but also traumatized very very uh very serious look and mm. it just worked so well together like this this yeah. moment the thing that he said his look the music it was for me it kind of got a touch that made it even more peculiar odd and also a bit depressing it it sounded beautiful but in a in a in a odd and somber way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it right before. Like melancholic is probably the right word. Yeah. Like melancholic doesn't have to be sad, but uh, but uh, it's kind of kind of also nostalgic, looking looking back. But on the same hand, sad because it will never be the same again. Yeah, it gave a kind of depth to to the scene and to what got said at that moment. Like you, you already guessed something important is is about to happen. If if that music drops, you know when that music drops. Yes, yes, yes. It's yeah, it's beautiful. So um, yeah, uh, listen to listen to the soundtrack, guys. <laughs> listen. And yeah, then we see the next morning. Guts has fought the whole night, and he's just standing there, trying to rest, leaning onto his big sword. And Pug is sitting there um, on a branch, just, I don't know, completely being shocked about that man and how he's fought throughout the whole night and couldn't get any rest. And well, then, then yeah, they, they really did not lie when, when they said uh, that they <laughs> they have horror in, in this episode or in the uh, adaptation yeah. in general. Oh, gosh, I was I was kind of freaking out about that uh yeah Colette i was also very shocked again. how they put that in yeah um like like it completely came out of nowhere just this little girl talking or still kind of uh being taken by evil spirits and then just being completely bloody in her face and talking to guts uh in a in a creepy sense just That's, half of her that, body <laughs> yeah yeah that read really also like catch me off guard and compared or like not compared but paired with this uh cursed guts theme that is coming after that that's pretty pretty insane and also and also a fitting end for for the episode showing us that even though there is uh action in it even though there are nice characters what happens to nice characters is uh in i don't know nine out of ten cases really bad and even though even though action can be cool uh, what what lies at the end of uh, this marathon often is very horrifying. Hmm. Yeah, and I think it, I think it fits like the 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 original anime compared to the manga is they have some horror as well, but it's comparatively light and um, rated for I don't know uh, not not that horrifying. So I think they do, although it's not in the in the manga, they do this work justice. Uh, with or by emphasizing how horrifying the events are that are happening in in the story 
So I was I was just shocked by seeing that. I did I you know I I thought I, I know Berserk I know what's gonna come. Uh, let's see how they were able to implement it. But then out of nowhere, this torso starts talking again, and also how how it gets uh, how guts throws the knife in her head again, and then the blood is training. I, that was that was crazy. But then a very cool scene comes where all the the spirits or all the um, evil spirits are ascending from those uh, skeletons into the sky and reminding him again you are ours like you belong to us your blood and flesh belongs to us and he just doesn't know what to do and pulls up his cannon arm and just wants to silence them such a powerful scene for me like yeah. the voice acting is peak like how he screams and also the sound of the of the pull off from that cannon arm and this uh, impact frame this really was a goosebump moment for me again actually because he's just so stressed out like he killed all those but it, it just doesn't matter even though he ripped them apart they're still harassing his mind his yeah what's left from his sanity and he just doesn't know what to do and uh, pulls the trigger and i i, I love the scene and the paintings can, in the background I, are I perfect. Can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't agree more. I, I couldn't agree more. And um, yeah, like I said, it's I think I think a really moody and fitting ending for 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 a berserk adaptation, showing us that this world is indeed horrifying. It's not only like killing, uh, killing innocent people, but also using these innocent people uh, against our main hero. Hmm. And then we get a second uh, version of the guts theme i i recently called it the cursed guts theme on zodcast and yeah. i think it's kind of fitting and it or, or um here again it very much fits for the scene and for what they are telling us this desperate man who can pretty much do nothing about his fate than struggling through to survive and also the composition of the scene again, um, where we see Guts's eye and this falcon mirrored in his eye, paired with music. It's just such a melancholic, profound ending for the episode that leaves us yeah. with with a part of of the despair that Guts, Guts must feel in that moment. Yeah, it 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 really makes you. Uh, makes you think about the characters. What are they feeling? How do how how will the story progress from now on? Or what will will his reaction be? Or what what made him into the cold guy he is right now? Because like after Puck tries to comfort him, he's just laughing it all off. Even though like we know deep down that he isn't just like laughing it all off. It's just it's 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 a big deal to him that then he's admitting it or showing us. So um. Yeah, it really, it really makes you, makes you, it really sticks with you, the ending. It's not like a lighthearted ending where you're like, all right, the, the pilot is now ending. We, we are ending with, uh, with some action and then Guts carries on and go, goes, goes away. It's, it's more like being heavy. So it, it kind of, kind of brings you down and I don't know, tries to, tries to remember you how this story is actually going to go or what the story is after all hmm. it doesn't try to s sell itself for something that it actually isn't in reality like it it gives you a good glimpse at the yeah melancholy or how, how profound and deep and also hard to go through this story will be like yeah, uh like um the the whole story or um I don't know the story or the world itself doesn't try to doesn't try to to hide the fact that this is a malevolent story with malevolent ghosts, spirits, or people, and that there quote is no paradise for <laughs> you to escape to, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say that a lot. I, I wanted to say that as well, but now you just. I yeah, like I'm that sorry. quote. Yeah, um, it's it's the best quote ever. Mm. Because if you look at Berserk from a 
outstand uh, from 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 above, not knowing the story and see all those fight scenes, you might think, okay, this is very just heroicism and uh, um, flashy, cool fighting scenes. And looking at those fighting scenes separated from the rest of the story, you might think this is all about uh, this feeling of being a hero on the battlefield and fighting your way through and just this overly yeah masculine uh story of i don't know self mastery and it kind of is a story of self mastery but in a very different sense it it goes way deeper and maybe i'm very much over interpreting but i think this ending scene already leaves the impression that this is not about fighting per se like yeah. it's not the the core message from this manga or anime is not fighting is cool you know you see this completely crumbled mind of this man and how he in the end you already uh pointed it out kind of switches back to this mindset of him that allows him to somehow keep his sanity together instead of losing it all over sorrow and despair which would be the normal reaction or human reaction not that this is not normal but we see how the how the circumstances break break this man and yeah that's definitely not shallow so uh yeah pretty pretty amazing introduction to to the overall world and themes of yeah. berserk yeah definitely not only not only showing us the fighting but also the rather philosophical and even darker themes than fighting could ever be yeah there is this iconic sentence Puck says it's not your fault trying to lift him up which is which is nice but then he goes like you're right anyone who yeah. gets killed for getting caught up in someone else's fight is a small fry and afterwards he even says uh, if you uh care to i don't know the exact words but if you but if you are always care about the ants beneath you or crushing the ants beneath you you won't be able to walk and i think that's that's such an iconic sentence although it's kind of paradox and they stands against what guts feels because he always tries to save the innocence he's not the the bloody brutal killer that enjoys fighting or fighting innocent people but here he's just uh trying to cope with what just happened or justify that it's somehow okay that they died although he's complete completely freaking out about it in his mind now we are back at interpreting uh, <laughs> back the story which is not what we intended with this video but yeah um, awesome awesomely put together and the last scene we see is Guts walking into the forest going to I don't know his next fight we don't know um, and Puck yeah, is may following maybe to him. the count that would be cool maybe to the count yeah yeah um, um, they Arch said that they want to give us more background before um tending their attention towards the count so probably the next episode won't be about the count yet I i'm curious what they're up yeah. to i'm curious what's your prediction let's just make a random prediction but there's you you know like the next segment is about the count but he doesn't get to action in like the next two to three chapters like we see him in the next chapters but he isn't uh, the whole focus of the next chapters. So maybe he will, he we will see him, but we don't get to action with him yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just wait for it. How let's how many months will we have to wait? Yeah, wait. maybe maybe uh, maybe we have to to wait for the next chapter until the next episode drops, like around the same same time span. Mm -hmm. but that then be... then again it will be like christmas <laughs> yeah. true true we are really yeah. getting all practice and waiting <laughs> like berserk fans must be the most patient guys ever <laughs> yes or completely definitely. distressed and fucked up by waiting so long either either one of those <laughs> all right i think i think we um we conveyed our our opinions as respectful as possibly i hope so yeah. and um yeah this is if if, if anyone from our studio listens uh, right now then um yeah we'll 
uh, we're really glad that you took this work uh, on your shoulders and delivered a really really great pilot episode and that that really really got us hyped for more so um yeah thank you for for this for this almost perfect for perfect product um it's just me being picky so don't take it personally uh yeah but uh after all you really can't you really can't complain about every uh, anything it's like uh, overall it is a really really good package that you delivered to us and um yeah yeah uh, i can I, just I think, uh, yeah sorry <laughs> no, no go on please i can just uh, emphasize that again and also i i have been looking at the feedback a little bit and like the the for example that little little bash um uh, at the premiere is completely not representative of the overall feedback like almost every comment i've read is positive they are all oh. saying this is insane please do more this is like unreal that this is happening this is perfect this is the best thing i've seen really those are the comments yeah and yeah i can just agree i'm completely hyped for more and what also is hyping me up for more is are the credits we see some scenes that are not related to this episode and it all looks so good uh guts walking through that snowy alley and we we can already guess oh it could be that or this or that scene and it looks all yeah. very good so there's so much yeah. Still, we also we also see him like uh, in between pillars uh, that are looking like um, the the scenery for the fight against the uh, against the, against the count. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it really it really makes us hungry uh, for the next episode, uh, and hopefully they are they are cooking the same as they did right now, and we will not starve to death before they release it. Yeah, we 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 won't. But. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, but but yeah. you have to you, you have to honestly say it in that way. It's like, it's like a real episode for a real uh, anime TV show that they just casually dropped. And I would, I would like to maybe 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 they are still expanding their their studio and then they will, I don't know, put out uh, episodes more frequently and um, I don't know, just just give us the whole Berserk universe adapted. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah, they, but like, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a high demand, but you know what I mean. It would be cool. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's it's just insane if you if you look at the credits, how few people worked on that, and we are kind of ex um, applying the same standards or ways of criticizing or talking about it as we would have with just regular animes, you know. Like, and it's not even, you know, like we're not being gentler or anything like that. Just because it's a fan adaptation, it's it's just so great. It could, it could be, canon, you know. Like yeah. you you here and there little details we notice, but you you we could criticize so much about other anime productions as well. So it's not because it's a fan adaptation. It's just because um, everyone has a different taste on certain details so it's there was one comment on youtube which said i can't believe i am in the parallel universe where we get to see a second um season of berserk 1997 and this is really how i feel about it it's so it's so great that you guys really found each other and you're complementing each other perfectly and i'm completely hyped for more for what is to come yeah. and uh, wanna yeah uh, give you kudos again uh, you all did an awesome job and i can't wait to see more and also if you want to <laughs> i would be hyped to talk to you again someday like i j it, it was just so fun and maybe maybe we can can do it again yeah yeah thank you thank you guys uh you just <laughs> someone someone uh sorry i'm i'm referring to so many comments but someone said uh, you just casually dropped the best content we've seen in years i don't think they casually dropped it <laughs> but uh, they were working on it very long, very hard, but they f for sure did drop some of the best yeah. stuff that we got in, in years. And they just, sorry, I have to say, they just outrun the 2016 anime, although I didn't watch it. So uh, just from a uh, yeah. outstanding... They, they outrun it uh, even though they had lesser people, um, maybe even less experience. They had They had less money. They had just less resources in general at their hands, but still like played their cards off really well. Yeah. Awesome. 
Thank you guys, and awesome. thank you for listening. I hope uh, maybe maybe someone uh, um, uh, yeah, has suffered until this point. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit of cloudy head today, so but I hope you could still uh, take something away. And if uh, yeah, don't hesitate to share your thoughts, your opinion on the pilot in the comments. And yeah, if you don't want to add anything else, Corny, I think we can call it a day. We've been talking quite we a can, bit. Yeah. I think we can call it a day. Yes. yes. Okay, then uh, until next week where the next uh, yeah, regular Zodcast episode will drop. Till then. Until next week. <laughs>